here are some predict the product questions that we can practice with. The first question uh, has a secondary substrate. Uh, it has a good, um, good leaving group if I change it. This is not what it's supposed to be. Now it has a good leaving group attached to it. We have a polar aprotic solvent. So while the secondary substrate doesn't really tell us if we're going to expect um, SN1 or SN2 type chemistry, the DMSO does support SN2, and we have a good nucleophile here. If we had something that might be used as a base, uh, then we would have to consider elimination reactions, but we have no good base here. We have a good nucleophile, we've got a good leaving group, we've got a secondary sol uh, substrate, and polar aprotic. So we're expecting SN2, uh, and that makes it pretty easy to answer the problem. We're just going to invert the stereochemistry and install the nucleophile. And of course, sodium is just there for the ride. It's sodium plus. That's just because we can't buy SH minus. We have to buy a neutral compound. So we buy sodium thiosulfide, uh, sodium sulfide, I'm sorry. And, uh, and sodium is just there for the ride. If you are concerned about it, it is uh, now the counter ion from our leaving group. So we make sodium uh, tosylate. Uh, and so we get inversion here. We could envision uh, another question using the same substrate where we might have methanol as our reagent. And in that case, secondary substrate, good leaving group. Now we have polar protic. And so that's going to support SN1 type chemistry. Uh, and here now the methanol is our solvent and our nucleophile. And so we would expect both enantiomers that are possible. And first, we should establish that this in, is indeed a stereocenter, and that's true. So we're expecting to form both enantiomers here in more or less a 50-50 mixture. If you want to favor uh, this one over here, say that's greater than 50%, and over here is less than 50%, uh, that's fine, given that the uh, the leaving group may be sort of in a blocking position um, and might influence the outcome slightly here. The next question is a primary substrate. Uh, so we're not going to do any SN1 or E1 type chemistry, but we might do E2 or SN2. And then DBU, uh, we have to remember, if we look back at our um, four different choices, we know that DBU also falls under the base only category. There's not that many base only, so this is a pretty easy category to remember. And actually, I would like to put t-butoxide in here as well. Um, the book, I think, keeps it as a strong nucleophile, strong base, but we know that t-butoxide is just too bulky to act as a nucleophile, so I think it's better suited for base only. And so really, there's only four choices in this base only category. We're looking at one of them right here. So base only, and typically base only, uh, as we saw, E2. They're all E2, so that uh, is easy to assess. This is E2. We need to find a beta hydrogen. That's going to be right here. Remove that hydrogen, and you can just draw some random arrow push like that if you wish, and we get to this alkene, and that's the only alkene we can form. There's no other beta hydrogens. There are no stereoisomers of this alkene, so this is the only product. Uh, on to the second one, we have what we call a base, strong base, and strong nucleophile. So this could, uh, could have substitution or elimination, and we have again a primary substrate. So let's look up on our chart here. This chart is, of course, from the end of chapter 8 in our Klein text. We are using this category now, and we have a primary substrate, and so we're going to see that we're actually going to do a bit of substitution and a small amount of elimination. So the only time that the strong base can be used to substitute is when we have a uh, rather streamlined strong base, so ethoxide, methoxide, or hydroxide, and we're dealing with a primary substrate. If those two conditions aren't met, we have a secondary, or maybe we have only a, a base, we're going to favor elimination. So we're going to favor SN2 but we'll draw a little bit of the E2 reaction. So we're going to form this, where here's our nucleophile that we just added, and that's going to be our major product. And we'll form a little bit 
of the elimination product. That will be our minor product. And it's oftentimes hard to avoid forming this minor product. So we need to remember to include that uh, when we're asked to predict all of the products. Here we have a secondary substrate and we have OH minus and this is the same category as above. Uh, and of course again going back here now we're at a secondary substrate. Uh, the E2 is going to be major and the SN2 will be the minor product. So we want to draw E2 and in this case we have HA, HB, those two might give us different uh, different isomers and we have HC. So this can be minus HA and of course after we drew this alkene we observed that it is the E version so we can draw the Z version and maybe this is minus HB I'm not, I don't really care which one is which, uh, just understand that there are two of them. So we have the possibility of forming two different isomers if uh, there's not a high degree of symmetry. And then losing HC is right here. These are going to be the major products. This will be minor because it has only one substituent on the alkene, whereas these are both di-substituted. And then another minor product will be the substitution product, the SN2 product. So we need to be sure that we've inverted the stereochemistry, and this is also minor. And we can label it as SN2 if we want to. Uh, so then we see that, it, uh, that it, it comes from the SN2, and all the rest of these are from E2 reactions.